Yeah, so for some reason, uh, all right. Yeah, it should work. Yeah, so what I thought for today is I will explain to you a little bit how the course layout is because I had this discussion with Tomasz uh, and that will help you to um, scope the work for this course and for the other courses that you have to do for your masters, right? So what we are doing is we're trying to work out what will be your master thesis, right? So uh, you will be working um, for your master topic um, and that's a half a year work full time, right? So, and what, con what this consists of is you have to do some uh, literature review, you have to do some, uh, some actual research work, either prototyping something, building something, or doing analysis, collecting data, and so on. So you have some sort of a project work, um, and then you have to write the thesis, right? So you have to write the summary of the results and wrap it up into a thesis, right? So you have those kind of a three elements. And before you start, you need to have a plan, right? So plan is kind of on the entry, and that's where you will do your master thesis. So plan, there is a, a, a course called um, research plan, research planning, right? And in this course, you will prepare the plan, right? But you cannot do the plan without having a lit review, right? So majority of your lit review, um, which is this for your thesis, will be done in the research planning course, right? So that's your course where you will do your plan and your lit review. Of course, once you start your master thesis, some things may change a little bit and you may need to review it. So you will add a little bit of an extra work towards your lit review, but ma by majority you will reuse the, um, it's a bit of a blur, uh, you will reuse the lit review from your research planning, right? So then you have another course which is called advanced project work. And the advanced project work idea is that you build something which helps you for your master project but it also helps you to work out this process of conducting a lit review, doing the project work, and writing a report, right? So in this, what we want you to do is to do three things, which is the lit review, project work, and report. Um, and that's about some small research problem, right? So this has a, a, a fixed structure. And that's kind of a research, um, re you have some research question, right, for this one. Of course, it's much smaller than your master research question. It can be a sub-research question or pre-research question, right? So you may have a research question of saying, should I use this or this for your master's? And this is the answer, and then you do your master's, right? So that's kind of like a pre-work, um, pre-work towards your master project. So this one is kind of a building block and this one is the planning and the lit review, right? So now it leaves us the specialization course, right? So the course that you are in now. So what is this about, right? We have a little bit more flexibility. The structure for those two courses is fixed and you have to do plan and lit review and you have to do some small research question and do those three things, right? But here you can choose, at, at, at least in my course, you can choose which one you want to do more, right? So typically you have two options. You can be a little bit more theory based um, or you can be more practice based, right? So you can, if you're more practice based, you will prepare some prototype, some proof of concept and you will write a technical report, right? And then if you're more theory-based, you will do some lead review, you will do some analysis, you may do some, some uh, 
study on top of the uh, literature of the other people research and then you will write the report as well right it will be more like a research report than technical report or you do something in between right you do a little bit of that and a little bit of that and you are between those two extremes right so i don't mind either way right it's up to you whatever you feel suits you better for your project that you have in mind here um, you pick something here that kind of helps you bearing in mind that you need to leave something for advanced project work and bearing in mind that you will do your proper full literature review for your master thesis in this course right so here we don't want you to be doing full literature review for your master thesis and we don't want you to be doing something that you that fits into that project right you have to kind of split it so now the question is here what is it that you want to do and how can you carve part of it to be done here and another part of it to be done here right so depending what your plans are for the big master project you may try to decompose it into two smaller things and one of those smaller things you will do with this course and the other one you will do here the literature review as i was explaining uh you will do in the research project planning um research project plan course um and you will do a full read review and plan for the uh, for your master thesis will you change the plan of course you will change the plan right uh, you try to plan something, but it doesn't mean you have to execute exactly as you plan, right? So the actual execution here usually differs from the plan. The, the requirement, though, is that you have to get C, um, you have to get C or more from, from this course to kind of be okay to do the master thesis, right? Uh, if you get D, that means you have to revise your plan before you can do your master project or you have to revise what you're planning to do for a master project because one, your plan is not right, B, your scope or your research questions are not right or something is not quite right from the plan, right? So the plan is not only the Gantt chart, like what you will be doing when, but it's also the merits and that's why you're doing the lead review the lead review is the the bulk of what you have to do for your research project planning right because you're analyzing um, what is the state of the art what are the existing research questions which research questions have been answered already who did what work and where do i fit with my master project like what are my research questions right so you cannot do that without doing the full lead review right so rpp majority of RPP work is the full lead review for your master project. So in here you do the necessary lead review for the project work for the research question that you have in advanced project work and then you have to write the report. So this report is more like a mini uh, master thesis, right? So we want this one to be kind of composed of all the elements that you need, right? For your master thesis like introduction general where the question fits in lit review where my work fits in what did i do uh, and then summary right for this one we don't have to do that we should not do that right so this one is more like uh, as i was explaining here you sort of carve part of it it could be related to analysis of tools you may do some tool comparisons depending, like, uh, I will use your example because I know more about your work. So if you're planning to use this audio processing, you have to pick particular audio libraries or pick particular parameters of how you're extracting features, right? What features to use, which libraries to use, and so on. Those are questions which are not really good research questions for your master project, but they are necessary for you to know the answers to so you can do your master project, right? So you can do them here, right? You can say, okay, I want to analyze what are the libraries, what parameters can I extract, what features can I extract. I can look into the AI models, what sort of features the existing people uh, research used, with what effect, which features are useful, which are not useful, what, you know, what value did I got 
and that, then you summarize it, right? And that will be an input for you to, to do this. And then you can say, based on this work, I know I should use those features, and therefore I use those and blah, 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 right? So you can kind of build on top of what you will do here. So it's the same for, for you. So for people in this course, what I need to work with you on first is to work out what you will be doing here, what is the scope and what are the topics that you will be kind of doing here, how they will map here. Of course, the mapping can be a little bit vague at the moment, right? You, you just know, okay, it is useful, so I want to do it, but how exactly it will fit in your master thesis will come later, once you formulate your proper research questions for your master thesis, right? Um, and that's not an easy task, actually. So you will do, you will do it here, you will formulate some uh, research questions in your RPP, but those are kind of a preliminary questions, and more often than not, they are either too general or too narrow, right? Um, so you have to modify them. So usually what happens is you will revise them. Once you do some more work, you will have your final questions for your, for your thesis a little bit later. Once you already did some experiments, got some results, get a bit of a picture of what your master thesis actually is, then usually you refine it a little bit of what the proper research questions are, right? So the, the keyword here is scope, because you want questions that you can answer in your thesis. And that's really hard to, to say, because you don't know how much work it will take, right? So I may have a question. Uh, for example, I may want to say, what is the, I don't know, um, what's the best uh, AI model for machine training to recognize uh, spoken language, right? But that's very big topic, right? And I may be able to answer part of it, but not the whole thing. So if I'm only able to answer part of it in my master thesis, then I have to change my question to just be that part, right? So my question cannot be bigger and I'm only answering part of it, I have to change my question to say, okay, what is exactly what I'm answering, right? And we usually do this refinement once you know more or less how much work can you do in your master thesis. So this usually happens kind of halfway through the, the semester, which you're working on your thesis, right? Um, so for this, all I need to know is what you will be working on, what you're thinking of doing for the masters. We don't need to know all the details, but we need to know the details of what you want to do here, right? Uh, so what are the questions, what are the answers you're looking for, what are the prototyping scaffolding that you need to be able to carry on your, your work, right? Um, so for example, if you plan to do something with VR, you may need to base your choices on something, right? So why are you using this particular framework? Why are you doing this particular type of VR or with this particular style? Or, you know, um, maybe you want to focus your gestures on a particular thing. Maybe you, for example, want to focus yourself only on teleporting. How to use teleportation using gestures, right? So then you have to check, okay, what are the current existing teleportation models, right? Or maybe you want gestures to navigate menus and things like that, right? So then you need to research, okay, what, how people deal with menus in VR, right? Um, so you need to do a little bit of background work and either try something out or just research it, like write about it, like what did people did before. So then you do reading, right? So here you can do some reading. Um, you will do some analysis of what you read you will do some statistics. Maybe you need to say out of the 25 different systems I reviewed, most of them, 75%, use this particular way of teleporting, right? And those things are easy. Like, it's not, um, it's not like a very grandiose research question. Those questions are kind of easy, but they are time consuming, right? So if you ask all those questions here, you will run out of time. So you should ask some of those questions here, so then you just use the answers here instead of looking for the answers, right? Uh, so here we don't need to do like um, full-blown research. We can do part of the research or scaffolding for the research. So I don't need a research report here, right? Here you will have to have a research report, 
But here you can do, you have a little bit more flexibility. It's a specialization course. It kind of gives you the tools, the know-how and the scaffolding for you to do this and then subsequently this, right? Does it make sense? So here, it's, it's kind of, you drive this one because I'm not running this course like teaching you something that I want to teach you. I'm trying to facilitate you to kind of achieve what you need for the other courses and for your master project, right? In the specialization that you're doing. Um, so Tomasz asked me, why do we have specialization in mobile, web, and, and so on, right? Well, we need to <laughs> divide the work somehow, right? So those groupings are a little bit arbitrary. Uh, so then, Fauzi, uh, uh, Rune, and myself, and Christopher, and other lecturers have kind of a group of students to work with. And we kind of group them around the expertise the, the lecturer has, right? So Rune is doing more with databases, web technology, and kind of software engineering. And I'm doing more with mobile wearables, uh, VR, blockchain, distributed computing, right? Um, but that, you know, the, um, the title of the course doesn't really matter. What matters is what you want to do for, for the masters, right? So I want you to sort of think a little bit more in depth of what it is that you want to specialize in, and then we will do that, right? Um, so I talk a little bit with uh, Tomasz, and he wants to do something with Liquid Democracy, So, but he's not today here. Uh, if he joins the class, I will do one, two, three lectures about that. Uh, I know you want to do something with audio, so I will do one or two lectures about audio processing and what are the different techniques and, and so on. Uh, but those are kind of initial uh, just guides, right? Uh, and I know you want to do something with VR and, and gesture recognition, so some of the discussions about feature selections and so on might be useful for you too. And then I don't know what you would like to do. This is the strong that I, I have done uh, from work of uh, called uh, Smart House. Smart House, right. But uh, right now I don't mind to discover new things. So. Okay. Yeah, so... Um, and the, the particularity is that I don't have to do a master thesis after that. Right, right. So you're only doing the course yeah. and that's it. So then you have even more freedom, right? Um, yeah, so... Maybe you, you do need to kind of think a little bit what what interests you, uh, whether you want to do something similar to the other guy's uh, work or whether you want to do something else. I have a friend, a PhD student, who is doing um, um, PhD in forensic analysis of smart homes, right? So imagine that there is uh, some event happening in the house which has a lot of sensors, like a murder or something, right? What can you gather from the devices to support your theory, right? What evidence can you build up based on the motion sensors, smart blocks, um, you know, um, temperature sensors, things like this, that may help you to solve the case, to kind of recreate what happened actually in the, in the house, right? Or to um, say that a particular hypothesis is not possible because the sensor's data doesn't support it, right? So the sensor's data doesn't support that somebody was in the house when something occurred, right? Um, so if that interests you, maybe we can talk with him and you can work out some something in kind of uh, in the smart home uh, space that you might research a little bit more in depth. Um, or maybe there is something you want to learn more about, like AI or, or something, right? Uh, and then you can pick a topic from from that angle and spent this course like learning a little bit more and then writing some sort of report at the end, right? So the um, the evaluation for this course is a report. It's a written report, um, six to ten pages, uh, can be more technical or can be more um, just analytical. Um, and there is an oral exam which is basically about your work, about your report, right? Uh, so the exam is about like how how did you work, how did you write the report, what is in it, and then so on, right? So it's um, kind of focus on on you, uh, not on everybody else's. But 
I will try to pick lecture topics which are kind of of interest to more than one person, right? Uh, so when we're talking about uh, signal processing, I will try to keep it kind of more general. And same for the AI. Um, so th those are the um, those are the topics that I already planned uh, in my head. Depending whether Tomas will join or not, we will also use uh, some things for introducing the blockchain concepts. Uh, so I was thinking spending uh, just one lecture introducing you the tools and kind of the methodologies and like what you can play with if you're interested in learning about blockchain smart contracts. Um, yeah, exactly. So <laughs> that that was kind of uh, yeah. A lot of people are talking about this, but I, 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 never heard the, I was magical. Before. Yeah, so you know the decentralized uh, systems like uh, BitTorrent, for example. Yeah. So how BitTorrent works? Uh, kind of some kind of using the, the user resources? Yeah, that's right. So user kind of contribute their resources and there is many of them. They are called peers yeah. uh, and they share files. So they can be used for storing some chunks of a file and then other people can download or upload uh, the, the chunks of files, right? Um, so you the, the basic concept is that you have kind of a decentralized system with peers and they talk to each other in some form and then in the middle there is no controlling entity right but what's in the middle is kind of we can share share files right because of this interactions we can kind of share files so blockchain technology is similar but instead of sharing files <coughs> we say we have some nodes, we have some peers, and we will share a ledger. So blockchain technology sometimes is called distributed ledger technology, right? And what is a ledger? Ledger is kind of like a kind of like a database with entries, right? And any modification of the entry, if I update something, so all the writes and updates are negotiated in such a way that it is one source of truth, that this is just one single ledger that everybody agrees what it is, right? So the beauty of blockchain or distributed ledger technology is that we sort of have a system where um, non-trusted participants work with a single source of truth. They kind of agree of what actually is true. In, the, in this database, right? Um, and that leads to a number of things. For example, you can have a cryptocurrency such as Bitcoin, which is maintained by no central authority, but all the participants agree who has how many Bitcoins, right? So there is no central bank, there is nobody controlling how much is issued and who has what, but everybody agrees who has how many and which transactions are valid and which ones are not. Um, so that's one, one use of it. The more, um, more difficult or more interesting, maybe, uh, use of it is that you can do that for computation. So what you can say is, I, I don't only want database, I also want a computer which is doing something. So it, 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 it executes some things which nobody can change and nobody can stop and nobody can uh, manipulate. So it is kind of like, um, so this one is pretty much like a, just a database, but this one is more like an Amazon uh, EC2 or some other cloud computer, which has, the, you can deploy some software on it and it will run, it will execute it, but then nobody owns it. Like if I deploy something on Amazon EC2 and somebody says, okay, I will attack them or I will, uh, send them like cease and the um, a notice, they can stop it, right? But here, nobody can do that. Nobody can stop the computation that you put in. Um, so you can kind of come up with some form of uh, contractual agreement 
deploy it and then it will be kind of valid. It will be always true and always kind of executed the way you designed it. Um, so those are kind of a smart contract. Those are pieces of executable code which are verifiable by all the peers and they kind of um, execute a certain logic that always happens the way you planned it. So one very small example of this is um, atomic swaps. So we can exchange digital goods in such a way that doesn't involve a trusted third party, right? So typically in the normal world, if you have something and I have something and we want to exchange it, uh, we have to meet and you give me what you have and I give you what you have, right? Uh, if we, in two different cities or two different countries, if I want to give you something and you want to give me something, well, there is this uh, risk that if you email it to me, I may not pay for you for it, right? Yeah. Or I paid, but you never you never emailed, or you say, yeah, I I did send it, but you know it got lost on the way, right? So what we do is we use a, a trusted third party, right? So we mail and pay to somebody else. It collects stuff from you and from me, and once it has both things, it gives you your payment and gives me my thing, right? So. But with this type of system, we can do an atomic swap, which means you can give me something and I can give you something and we cannot cheat each other because the exchange either happens atomically or doesn't happen at all. It's like in databases, right? It's like a transaction which either happens or it doesn't happen. Um, and we can achieve that with smart contracts without this kind of a trusted third party. Uh, and that opens up, again, a lot of possibilities for doing trading or kind of tracking things or selling things or doing all sorts of different things which doesn't require additional costs, right? Um, so one, one idea where this is used is like right now if, you, if you're buying a house, you have to engage a, a lawyer. It's like a heavy, heavy thing, right? To buy and sell house, right? Um, but if you don't need to engage a lawyer to sell and buy houses, you can cut your house into very small chunks and sell a shares to your house, right? So I can, because I'm the owner of my house, I can say I can send one thousandth of a house to you. You will own it. And the moment I sell the house, you get one thousandth of the price, right? So if we don't need to involve lawyers and everybody else, but we can maintain this relationship validated by the kind of a easy system, which is cheap to run and doesn't involve additional costs, then people can do that. So they can issue shares for all sorts of different things. Uh, and they do. So they, there are different projects which experiment with this type of uh, uh, technology. All right, so um, any questions about this? I kind of have a question about yep. advanced project work. Yep. Because we haven't had a lecture about this yet. <laughs> yep. And I received an email oh, last too. week yep. basically detailing that we yeah. For the first lecture. That's right. Points. So that's this. Yeah. So I have a question kind of we have the research question that we discussed sort of in research project planning. Is it tied together? No, th those are not tied together. Yeah, so this one, so as I'm saying, this is really about your master project, right? Those things are not about your master project, but they should be about something which is relevant to your master project. So your research questions for your master project will be done in RPP. But in advanced project work, you may think of the big questions for your master thesis, but you need to have a small research question that you can do lit review for, project for, and report for in a single course, right? So that has to be quite small, like a mini research question, right? If it's too big, then you will not be able to do all three things, right? You can have a too big question here. You can ask here kind of a big research question and do some work towards it, write a report about it, and it's not finished yet, it's not answered. That's fine. We don't need all the answers here. But here you do. Here you have to, ha you have to scope it in such a way that you will manage the project in a single course. Right? And that's part of the challenge. So part of the challenge here is to scope your question. So scope. 
um, scope the question in such a way that you can actually do all three things in a single course. Um, yes, you can, you, what you could do is you could do some prep work here and based on the prep work here, do this, do the, uh, the police project yeah. in uh, the advanced project yeah. work. This one? Yeah, this one will be the bigger project for your master thesis, the, the other project you were discussing, yeah. How you pre-process the, the, your data sources, how you organize the architecture, all this will kind of come here, and then you have to do it. Although, in your case, because this is, this and, and uh, your project is big enough that I think you will have enough work to do here and here for the big project without the police project, right? We may kind of check how much you want to go sideways, yeah. right? Because I, I don't want to, I don't want you to be pulled off from your main project, which I think already is quite challenging. Uh, even if you do dedicate this course and advanced project work towards the, um, yeah. But for, for example, here what you could do is you could do like the the learning pipeline, right? So you have. You assume you have your feature extract, extraction and everything ready and how you do the training, how you do the learning of the AI. You could do this. Or here you could do just the pre-processing, how to extract and prepare the features for the training. Right. So this, both of them are, are, are good APWs projects. So you will end up with something that you can then benefit directly doing the next step in your master project. Right. Uh, so, you, like in your head, you have to organize it. What are the building blocks? What do I need to know? I need to know how to do the initial processing of the audio signals. But that's relatively easy, right? What's next? I need to know which features to extract. That's already harder, right? You can do this in this course. So, once you have the features, how, do I will, how will I actually extract them? What tools will I use? How fast it will work? Can I process all my terabytes of data or I will need months to do that, right? So doing some preliminary speed analysis for training also needs to happen somewhere. If you leave it for the final semester, you will run out of time because it's yeah. too many th things, but right? That's right, then you're doomed, right? Yeah. yeah, so you have to know that before you start your project, right? Mm -hmm. Because that reflects, okay, if, if it's too long, then how do I divide it? Maybe I can uh, do on part of my data set. Or do I have to ask different questions, right? Or if it turns out that you can train on the whole set, great, right? Then you know you can confidently start your project because you know it's going to take three weeks, right, the training. But if you don't know, like, what we would like you to do is at the beginning of your master project, you should not not, not know a lot of things. You should know a lot of things already, right? So here we, we, your risks and your unknowns should be minimized, right? So anything that you don't know yet, you should try to use those three courses to know. Yeah. And then when you start your master projects, you already know most of the things you need to know to, to finish the project, right? So, yeah, Th those three courses are effectively to reduce your uh, risks, right? Uh, and this one in particular is to train you to scope this work, right? So here you have to scope this work, right? So you, you will scope what you want to do, what your research question is, and then you will do it, and then you will realize I planned too much. Most people kind of realize that it's actually much more time consuming than they thought, right, to do this. So then you will learn that scoping is kind of hard. And then when you're scoping your master project, you will take it into account, right? So you will try not to overscope. Uh, 
we usually have a problem with overscoping um, because right so about the scope right so here here is like a perfect perfect scope right if you go left of it you're kind of doing too little right and if you go right from the perfect one you're doing too much right so if you're planning to do anything which is too little we will tell you the supervisors the lecturers will tell you no, that that's you know that's trivial like that's a uh, bachelor level or that's too too small right you will easily get feedback so if you're planning to do this you easily get feedback that it's too too small right so feedback on that side of spectrum is easy you will always get it right what if you're planning to do something here right feedback on that side of spectrum is much harder because um, it depends it depends it depends on two components one component is um, um, the research right so for example if you say if you come to me and you will say I want to uh, uh, make um, the gesture recognition like uh, usable in games in uh, in modern games right I will tell you well that's a great goal but it's really hard to have something working in games with the frame rates and with the speed that you need to do and you may not achieve the quality needed needed for the games it's easy to, to say that right because it's very ambitious on the research side right um, so if the feedback is too ambitious on the research side you will get feedback from the lecturer right but there is a second component and the second component is based on how much work will you do right so some students do 700 hours in their master semester some students do 400 hours some students do enormous amount of work right so I had a student who did over 700 hours which is double the normal amount of work and he said I'm not done yet I need to take another semester to finish my work right like okay <laughs> so then he really was on that side and he did it right he overscoped but he put a lot of effort and a lot of work and he kind of did something on the right hand side right outside of the normal kind of uh, normal distribution here right but that was because of the second which is effort right and that one I don't know like I have students who come and say um, I have a work I'm working already full-time I will not have time to get a good grade so you know let me finish and pass but I don't need an A right it's like okay then we kind of uh, try to, to do it around here right if you want a good grade yeah we try to do a little bit on the right hand side right you, you put a little bit more effort right we typically don't make people do stuff here because you know you can burn yourself or you can kind of fail right um, and on the research side of course I will give you feedback that yeah I don't think it's feasible right I don't think you're gonna find a cure for cancer in your in your master thesis right you might but I doubt it right if you want to go for it go for it but you know <laughs> I'm warning you that's very ambitious right um, so but on the effort side it's up to you right so if you have enough time if you want to get a good grade and if you want to learn a lot then you can kind of be a little bit more ambitious you can kind of aim like your project is ambitious I think right it's a lot of work it's not impossible to do it's it's doable it's just that it's a lot of small things you have to do and it's a lot of them right um, your projects I don't know details yet so I cannot kind of help you to scope it but it's not my role to scope your projects it's actually your role to scope your project right so what I'm saying is we will tell you if you down scoping it we will tell you no 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 if you do this you will not get your master's degree because the reviewers will say that's better thesis right um, it does happen occasionally but very rarely that a reviewer says this project is not enough for a master thesis right usually it's kind of caught before it happens um, so if you scope somewhere here or a little bit to the right somewhere here then I will say nothing 
and then if you really overscope, I will say you're probably overscoping, but I cannot stop you doing that, right? So what happens is most of the master thesis are kind of overscoping. So very rarely you, you kind of hit it really right, and we prevent you to do something too small, right? So most, because of the nature of this, most people kind of overscope and they learn that they overscope, they try to do too much, right? And one thing to learn about this is about APW, right? You will overscope APW as well. You will realize that it looks small when you started it, but actually it was quite a lot of work, even though it looks small, right? So then you will kind of uh, revise your plan for your master project, then you will kind of uh, downscope a little bit to get a little bit more toward the perfect scope, right? Uh, but that's like part of the part of the learning is for you to get a feel of how much resources, how much work things take, so then you can plan what can you achieve in six months or four, four to five months when you're working on your master project, right? Um, in your case, that's that doesn't happen, but that's right. So, in, you know, typically we count from the beginning of um, January. So in December... Yeah, 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 that's true, yeah, that for APW, yeah. yeah, yeah, that's right, so that, that is quite small, yeah, this one is a little bit bigger chunk, and you already did some uh, building blocks for it, right, um, all right, any questions, any more questions about the three topics, three subjects, I mean, Okay, so um, in terms of, so let's, uh, because I'm recording the, the lecture and I want Marcus to uh, hear our discussion about the topics, but then we can talk about your projects and then we can kind of stop the, stop the recording. So I will first start with the, uh, some topic proposals that I thought we should have lectures on, um, and typically, um, yeah, so all of you will give like one lecture about what you're doing towards the end. So once you learn more about your own work, you will kind of do a presentation, right, uh, to, to the other students, right? So we will have uh, three to four student lectures about your work, right? Um, I was planning to do this uh, blockchain introduction lecture, uh, so one lecture about uh, blockchain and distributed ledger. Um, I did one last year, but kind of I will revise and I will kind of do a little bit more practical um, on what tools to use and what to kind of start playing with and how it looks like, right? Um, I was planning to do one on audio uh, processing um, and audio processing is similar to signal processing right so what's the difference well it depends depends what you're doing right so audio is basically a kind of an amplitude in time right uh, effectively right yeah. uh, if you're doing gesture it's de depending again how you're doing it right it might be um, two or three data points in time as well, right? So um, if you're do, doing image or video, again, it's like some data in the time domain. In image, you don't have the time domain, you have a spatial domain, right? Uh, but usually um, you have some sort of a value in some sort of a domain and you can do conversions, right? Uh, so, for example, we were doing um, we were doing a tremor study where we were measuring how how much people hands shake, right? So, what's what's shaking? Well, it's a uh, acceler acceleration in time, right? So, if your hands shake in time, then you have different acceleration of the phone, right? Um, you could say we want to be more accurate and we want to measure the actual orientation of the phone as well, like a three, three dimensional gyroscope data in time, right? So you either have one dimension or you have three dimensions, right? And those are in the time domain. 
but then you can convert it. You can convert it to a frequency domain, right? So instead of doing it in time, you're doing spectral analysis in the frequency domain. So audio processing is kind of an example of doing signal processing, but you can reuse it for other, other things as well, right? And some things that you can do here, like uh, first Fourier transforms or wavelet analysis, um, are kind of reusable for other domains as well, like maybe for gestures. Uh, so we will talk a little bit about like what, how those are done and what they mean, right? So one or two, depending how, how we're doing in time. So then I was thinking, so we have those three, those three. Um, I was thinking of, um, Yeah, so what else? What else would be kind of interesting for your projects and for your thinking and for your specialization to cover in terms of lectures? So one which we also did uh, is uh, research methods. You do have research method. You, you did have research methods before, uh, but it's kind of good to revise it right um, so one will be probably about like doing a lit reviews or doing some research methods and so on it's again kind of a refresher of what has been covered in the other courses but not everybody took all the courses so it, it might help um, so what else I don't have to work with brain computer interfaces in my field okay that might that be the lecture of the field uh, yeah we do rather I give a lecture on that. Are we rather than you give a lecture on brain computer interface? Yeah. Um, it doesn't matter that much. It doesn't matter. Yeah. So let's. If you rather I do. Yeah. So I let's. I have to learn about it anyway. So That's right. So it would be a good motivation because you need to learn about it. So you, you can cover it. Uh, so EEG. Yeah. 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 Sounds good. So what are the topics you... Uh, you're thinking of doing a lecture on? Depending what you're focusing on this topic, in, in this subject, you can either lean more towards AI or more towards audio, right? Uh, but you need to kind of... You probably should not do both in this course. You probably should just pick one. Um, mm -hmm. So. Yeah. Maybe I need to have a, a lecture about AI. Because, uh, yeah, that's right. So, so maybe we do spend, um, because if if you're doing AI, then I don't want to repeat. So maybe we kind of are split two different ways of talking about AI, and like I cover something that you don't cover, right? So we'll have two lectures yeah, on, I, on AI. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And apparently, machine learning has this uh, feature extraction that they were mentioning. Yeah. Uh, but deep learning doesn't. It's just doing the extraction itself in the AI also. That's right. Yeah, that's right. So I'm leaning towards deep learning. Yeah. So, so we, could, we could split it in such a way that you do deep learning and I do machine learning, right? Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, so, I mean, it's not like deep learning is not doing feature extraction. You, yeah. you, you need to do it. It's just that it's the, uh, the architecture of your deep learning network doing it for you, right? Mm -hmm. So what, ha what typically happens in uh, image analysis, you have certain transformations which extract typical features but you have so many of them that the network is able to learn which ones are important, which ones are not important, and use that information la later for classifications, right? Whereas if you're doing traditional machine learning, you're kind of doing it manually, more manually, right? Uh, here you're doing it more like a brute force kind of type of uh, approach. Yeah. But at least we know what are the typical features that you, the different layers of your network are kind of doing, right? Um, what sort of transformations? So we could do that. Yeah. You can also use some feature extraction and then do the 
way. Exactly. Because you know some way. That's right. So you can kind of help help the training by doing some manual tweaking of which uh, hidden layers, you know, what features to focus on. Yeah. Um, all right. Um, so we have a plan. Uh, what we can do is we can stop the recording for now. Uh, we meet next week, and next week I will talk about the the blockchain and smart contracts. Um, and now we will talk. Yeah, I will stream the lectures. Yes. Yeah. Uh, no, I will not stream the lectures. I will record them. Yeah. So the lectures will be recorded, and then I will put them online. Yeah. Um, yeah, we don't want them too late because then you have exams and you kind of are wrapping up the project. So it's a little bit up to you, but October, November, yeah, it's fine. Yeah. Yeah. So what we can do is I, I on the wiki page I will prepare the schedule. What lectures do we have kind of organized by me? And then you will fill in the slots uh, later in the semester with your lectures. Yeah. Sounds good.